All right, welcome back as we continue through the investigation of the major steps of a muscle contraction. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the step of excitation contraction coupling. So in previous uh, lecture, we talked here about, oh, excuse me, hop back. In the previous lecture here, we talked about excitation or maybe the events at the neuromuscular junction in which a neuron stimulates the muscle to have an action potential across its cell membrane. So that's where we left off, uh, where the neuron releases a neurotransmitter by acetylcholine. The acetylcholine binds to the receptor on the motor end plate of the sarcolemma. The receptors are ligand ligand gated ion channels which means that once the acetylcholine binds to those receptors they open up and allow ions to pass sodium potassium and even calcium primarily sodium influxes into the cell which causes it to become more positive or depolarizes it because inside of the cell is slightly negative so once we've had that action potential travel all the way or, or start to cross uh, across the sarcolemma uh, we should introduce a few new structures here. Uh, those structures include, let's see if I can't find my slide here. The structures include what's known as the T tubules and the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So if I... give us this slide here what we see is that the this is just a portion of the muscle fiber kind of almost that takes a uh, it takes a cross section deep into it so we really uh, we can see here that the specialized cell membrane oh let me go back here we can see here that the specialized cell membrane is referred to as the sarcolemma so here's our sarcolemma and so when this action potential is going to travel all the way across the sarcolemma, let's say in that direction, what's also going to happen is that this action potential will then travel down the transverse tubules, often referred to, also referred to as the T-tubules. And so what you have here is a portion of the actual sarcolemma, it's an invagination, and a portion of the sarcolemma which actually goes into the muscle cell itself, wraps itself around the myofilaments or the myofibrils, and a butt up against, remember this name, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So it comes up against the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Where the sarcoplasmic reticulum meets the... T tubule is called the terminal cisternae. So this is the terminal cisternae here that comes up across abuts the T tubules. And so remember that the sarcoplasmic reticulum houses calcium, houses calcium ions. So the terminal cisternae here, and when you have a terminal cisternae, a T tubule and a terminal cisternae, that structure is referred to as a triad. So the triad is the three section port, uh, comp component of the terminal cisternae. You've got two, two components of the sarcoplasmic reticulum on either end and the T tubules. So ultimately, what's going to happen is this action potential is going to travel across the sarcolemma. It's going to travel into the T tubules and it's going to stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium. So again, calcium is the excitation contraction coupler. So here we have the concept here where we have the action potential stimulating the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium into the sarcoplasm or the cytoplasm. That's what we see right here the action potential traveling down the nerve at the area where the nerve meets the muscle, the neuromuscular junction, acetylcholine is released from the nerve, passes the synapse, binds to the receptor. That receptor is going to cause an influx of sodium that changes the cell membrane, which causes excitation or the 
Let's go back one more time. That causes the charge to continue down into the T-tubules, so it travels into the T-tubules. This right here is identified at the bottom as your... Right, you have your sarcoplasmic reticulum with calcium housed in it. So to go backwards, the sarcoplasmic reticulum housed with calcium is stimulated uh, by the action potential through the T-tubules, which travels along the T-tubules. Uh, but originally, that action potential starts at the neuromuscular junction. What will happen is that calcium will then bind to the regulatory proteins and start for the cross bridge cycle. So in our next stage, we'll start to look at the cross bridge cycle and get the interactions of the thick and thin filaments.